Hello and welcome to my channel. Today we'll be taking a look at Hyperlite Mountain Gears 3400. The model I specifically used in my 3 of the Appalachian Trail in 2019 is the 3400 Southwest, but it's important to note that the primary difference between the different models, such as the 2400, 4400, or even the Junction, is the overall volume and outer pockets provided. The 3400 Southwest is a 55 liter pack weighing a little bit more than 2 pounds that features 3 Dyneema pockets, 2 on the sides, and a large one on the front. Before purchasing the 3400, I was using a Gregory Baltera pack that weighed about 5 pounds. I made the switch during my thru-hike because of recommendations from other thru-hikers as well as the need for a lighter base weight. After completing the Appalachian Trail primarily using the 3400, I still have mixed feelings about the pack. While my feelings are mixed, I do not regret buying the pack, but the design needs some changes. It's important to note when buying any non-traditional type of pack that there is a different mentality required than a standard frame pack. Keeping your base weight down is crucial with the 3400. If the pack ever went over 30 pounds, it was an awful experience. While that might be a trend with most ultralight packs, this issue was very prevalent with the 3400. If I ever over resupplied with my winter gear in the bag, I felt it and the bag caused severe bag rash. Speaking of bag rash, it took my body about 300 miles to adjust to this bag. I had massive blistering forming on my lower back and hips, and a few other three records I know with other hyperlight products had the same exact issue. The issue appeared to be caused by a few factors. Some of which could be addressed by Hyperlay and others the individual can try changing. One factor for me was my shirt and pant combo. The combination of war with the 3400 caused skin rubbing that was only cured by Luku tape and rest. I eventually switched to a Kaplan Patagonia shirt and a pair of BOA shorts which did seem to decrease the pack rash. The hip belt and the lower support could also use a bit of a redesign to decrease the potential for pack rash. The hip belt edges would dig into my skin and the lower back pad was simply just not enough. While Hyperlay was trying to save weight with every part of their design, it would have been nice if they made an alternate version that just had a little bit more padding on the hip belt and the lower back support. But that's part of the trade-off with this bag. The 3400 line has a very specific theme, bare bones. While it was a weird adjustment at first, I grew to like how few features the pack has. To keep it simple, the pack was a tube with shoulder straps, a hip belt, tightening straps, and some pockets sprinkled in. No extra zippers, no rain cover. No separate day pack included. The pack wants you to use everything it provides and be creative with it. There's no need for an additional slot for your trekking poles. Use the side pockets plus the tightening straps to stow your trekking poles when not in use. The top straps used to close the bag can hold your tent after a rainstorm and help prevent you from getting the inside of your pack wet. Packing the bag is simple. It's a tube with a wide opening. When I purchased the bag at Trail Days in Damascus, I was advised to not open the pack until I was ready to eat or when I was about to set up camp and I really couldn't agree more with that. The pack provides more than enough external space for any large items, plus it has massive hip belt pockets that can fit more than a day's worth of snacks in them. The 3400 is a frameless pack. Inside it are two aluminum stays to provide some structure to the bag. The stays can be removed, but I would recommend keeping them in unless you're willing to commit to being ultralight. I use the stays in addition to my Thermalite Soul sleeping pad to provide more of a frame and back padding. A common complaint I've heard from several hikers is a lack of spacing between the user's back and the pack. It's worth noting that the only form of adjustment you have is just the shoulder straps and there's no load bearing straps. While there is less airflow, I personally do not have an issue with this, especially since the material does not absorb sweat like other bags. The pack is mostly waterproof. I would still recommend keeping everything in dry bags regardless. The pack has two drainage holes. Occasionally the holes that would actually get the inside of my pack wet when I place it down on a wet surface. The overall quality of the pack is actually fantastic. While I do have a few holes on the outside, all were my fault from usually butt sliding down rock scrambles. I put some tape on the holes post trail just to help prevent them from expanding, but I still have no structural concerns with the bag and I feel comfortable using it again for another hike. I like the 3400, but it really does come at a cost. If I was doing another through hike and prepared with the pack and lowered my base weight, I'm sure I would love it way more. If you're looking for a casual backpacking bag, I would avoid the 3400 and look in an Osprey or Gregory pack. The extra comfort those bags can provide may be worth it for a shorter trip. But if you're willing to make sacrifices and work with the bag rather than against it, Hyperlite's 3400 may be the pack for you.